Alright, what's good? It's Worm, and today I got a slightly different video for you guys, but I have wanted to make this video for a little while now, and today I'm going to actually cover whether Jujutsu Infinite is worth the money or not. So as we know, Jujutsu Infinite's been out for a little while now, and of course there have been videos like this that came out on release, but as with all games do since release, they update. So today, we're going to be going over whether Jujutsu Infinite is worth the money or not as it is in its current stage. So, as I'll be covering in this video, I will be going over the majority of the content in-game and what it has to offer. Not only that, I'll also be going over a few feelings I have on the game overall and whether it makes me feel like it's worth the money or not. So with that, let's get started with the first subject being gameplay. So our first subject is indeed gameplay and how I feel about the general gameplay loop. Starting out in Jujutsu Infinite, you start out with 2 and 8 techniques and a little bit of cash. And you start the game by, obviously, going on these quests. You could go on these quests by going to the hub and then selecting a quest. You could then teleport to the quest by pressing J. Then simply, you complete the quest by beating a couple enemies, being a boss, or even just capturing a point. Once you finish the quest, you get a few loot boxes, pretty general stuff, and then you can teleport back. Over time, the quests do of course get difficult, and you could even get higher difficulty quests by ranking up your grade. And this all continues all the way to max level, which will then get us onto our next subject being the general grind. So the grind of Jujutsu Infinite is pretty much the same as all other games. You go, you beat enemies and bosses until you get to the max level. Yes, there are a few extra steps along the way with Jujutsu Infinite, but I didn't have the best time playing overall. If you like banner beers, you could go wild with these quests, but overall, they weren't super fun to me, even though I farmed the whole thing with Heavenly Restriction, which I'll get into later in the video. The devs do release a lot of codes for 2 times XP and Mastery, which help a lot with the grind, but overall, I would say as a person that doesn't like grinding and bandit beating, I don't have time for all that. And this is one of the categories that the game really lacks in. Luckily, that's not the only categories we're going over, and next up, we got PvP. Now where the game lacks in PvE, it picks up in PvP. And boy do I have some great things to say about PvP. This game is great with a wide variety of curse techniques to choose from, you can have a great time mixing and matching your builds. Not to mention how well all the effects and attacks are in game. Everything looks like it was made with heart and it really puts itself apart from other games when it comes to quality. The only issue I feel when it comes to this is the techniques is how you get them. Getting the techniques is absolutely insane and that's where we're going to get onto our next subject being in-game purchases. When it comes to in-game purchases, Jujutsu Infinite is no different than any other game. From your item notifiers to your spins, there are so many ways you can spend money on the game. Of course you don't need to spend money on this game, as you can get all the items in-game, luckily enough for the free play players. You can get items like innate rolls and spins in all the loot boxes, but unfortunately getting the innates you want out of spins from these loot boxes is practically more infinite than Gojo's Infinity itself. I will say, as I've been a tester, I can't forget to mention the fact that they've released so many codes to the points where I have 7,000 spins just sitting waiting to get used. So I do have to be honest, this aspect of the game isn't super bad, but then again, this isn't going to be there on free to play. So I will say this does make the game worth buying right now. So I will have to be honest, it isn't super bad, but then there are things like Heavenly Restriction, which I also bought myself. And I will say, if you want to take the easy path in the game, go and buy Heavenly Restriction. It is one of the most overpowered movesets in the entire game, allowing for extremely easy grinding. It does have more downs and upsides, which I could go over in a different video, but besides that, I will say it's very easy to play if you have money, if not being close to pay to win. But of course, we can't forget our last category, being the community. Now, I will have to say, the community of this game is very relaxed. I can't say I've seen all that much controversy or any issues in the community, but I would have to say I could just be missing them. With many more YouTubers who are still invested in the game, I will say this game has a great community behind it who will probably back it till the day the game dies. And luckily, there aren't too many weird people as of now, probably because the game is pay to win. But nevertheless, I feel that the community is a great part of this game, and even I've met some great people while playing this game who have met me with kindness and open arms. Now, with all that being said, is Jujutsu Infinite worth buying right now? I would say yes and no. I feel that if you have the money and you really want to play the game, go ahead and buy it. I'm sure you'll have a great time playing you'll really enjoy it. But if you're on the edge and you don't even know if you want to make that kind of investment or not, I would say save your money. The game still needs a little bit of work and I would say it's better to wait for something like Relsies. But besides that, overall I had a decently fun time playing the game and I do believe it will get even better as they continue to update it and as we get closer to the full release. But for now, that's all I have to say on the game and I hope you guys all have a great day.